Hi, this lesson is going to be quadratic equations, pages 96 through 99. Okay, this is on page 96. So quadratic equations, equations are a little bit different than what you've been doing. You've been doing equations with an X or a Y. Now you're gonna get some equations with an X squared in them. So it's just a little bit different. So we'll start with, look at that other stuff if you want on your own there. So we have, for example, this one here. They want you to plug in the number and solve for y. So y equals 2x squared when x equals negative 2. So let me put a little bit of white space here. So y equals 2x squared and x is negative 2, we're told. So we're going to plug negative 2 in for x squared. So that's going to change it now to y equals 2 times, I'll change the color, negative 2, that's going to be instead of x, and then that's squared. Because remember quadratics, now we're going to have an x squared in them. So I solve this by doing exponents before I do multiplication. So I have negative 2 to the second power. So that's the same as negative 2 times negative 2. So that would end up being y equals 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is going to be 4, positive 4, right? So then my final step then is to multiply the first two times what I got for my exponents. So y is equal to 2 times 4, which is 8. So that answer is 8. Put that up there if we want. y equals 8. Let's take a look at the one right next to it on the right here, that one. So if we're going to do that one, we have y equals 3 fourths x squared when x equals 4. So we'll put our little white space back. And how do we do this? So you might want to pause the video, try it, and then come back and see if you did it right. Okay, so we're going to take y equals 3 fourths times x squared when x is equal to 4. So we're going to plug the 4 in for our x. So that will become y is equal to 3 fourths, and then in parentheses, we're plugging in our 4 for our x value, 4 squared, just like that. So now we have y equals 3 fourths times 4 squared. Well, what is 4 squared? It's the same as the base, 4, times itself, twice. So 4 times 4, so that would be 16. And then we're going to multiply 16 by the 3 fourths. So I'm going to put this in parentheses just so we know what we're doing here. y is equal to 3 fourths. That's supposed to be a 3. And times 16, we can say 16 over 1 if we want to. If I do that, it helps me see what I'm doing. So 4 will go into 16 four times. 4 will go into itself once. So I did my canceling ahead of time so that I didn't have to reduce at the end. And I end up with y equals... 3 times 4 over 1, or y just equals 12. So the answer to this problem is y equals 12. Okay, so this is substitution. You're substituting in a number for x. Okay, I'm going to clear that. Go on to solving for y. So, Let's try this problem here. 3x squared equals y when y equals 48. So we're just going to plug in now the 48 in for 
y rather than 4x. So we end up with 3x squared equals, and then we plug in for y, 48. Now I need to get the variable by itself on one side of the equation. So what can I do? Well, this is multiplying. So I do the opposite or inverse. I'm going to uh, divide by 3. So I have to do the same thing to both sides. I'm going to divide the other side by 3. And then I'm going to cancel my 3s on that side. And that's going to give me just x squared equals, and then what's 48 divided by 3? That should be 12, I believe. 12, 24, nope, that's not 12. 48 divided by 3. We don't know. You can always do this. And 4 minus 3 is 1. Bring down the 8. 3 times 6 is 18. So 16. So this would be 16. However, we don't have x by itself. We have x squared. So in order to get an x by itself, we have to take the square root of x squared. I take the square root of x squared, I then get x, because the square root of x squared is x. Two x's together, multiplied together, gives you x squared. So taking the square root of it will give you the x. I, whatever I do to one side, though, I need to do to the other side. So I also have to take the square root of the other side of the equals. So the square root of 16, what number can I multiply by itself to give me 16? Yes, four. So, but notice now we have to be thinking in the realm of algebra a little bit more. Is four the only answer? The answer is no, it is not because four times four will give you 16. We know that. But what else will give you 16 multiplied by itself? Negative four times negative four. Doesn't that equal a positive 16 as well? Exactly. So x now has two values. It has positive 4 and it has negative 4. So that is the official answer for the one above. Okay, I'm going to clear. We'll do another one together. Let's do this one right here. 4x squared minus 144 equals y when y equals 0. Okay, so some white space this time a little bit. Okay, so 4x squared minus 144 equals, and what does y equal in our problem? zero so equals zero. So now I have to get x squared by itself. In order to do that, I'm going to move the 144 to the other side. So I'm going to add 144 since it was subtracting of 144. Whatever I do to one side, I must also do to the other side of the equals. And now I have these crossing off, negative 144 and positive 144. They cancel each other out. I'm left with 4x squared equals 0 plus 144. That's 144. And then I have a multiplication situation, so I want to use the inverse. So I'm going to divide by 4 to both sides. I divide by 4 to both sides, the 4's cancel out, and I'm left with just my x squared. And then I have 144 divided by 4. Well, if you don't know what 144 divided by 4 is, you know, you can use your calculator, but on the test, you're not going to be able to, so you're going to have to know how to do this. So 4 goes into 14. Uh, three times, three times four is 12, 14 minus 12 is two, bring down the four, four goes into 24 six times, so that's 36. So we have x squared equaling 36. Now we don't have x by itself yet, we have an x squared, so we have to take the square root of both sides. Take the square root of the first side, 
take the square root of the second side. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So the square root of x squared is just x. That's what we want. And then the square root of 36 is 6. So 6 times 6 is 36. And you didn't get tricked on this, did you? Negative 6, right? Because negative 6 times negative 6 is equal to positive 36. So there's your answer. Okay, that's clear. Okay, let's move on. Special equations review, it says. So this number two problem is one that you would definitely probably be seeing on a test. So let's take a look at how you would do this. So the ratio of two numbers is three to four. The sum of the numbers is 63. What are the two numbers? Well, we would say 3 times the number plus 4 times the number is equal to 63. Then we solve 3 plus 4 is 7x is equal to 63, divide both sides by 7, the 7's cross off, I'm left with x equals, what's 63 divided by 7? Mm -hmm, 9. However, that's not our question. Our question is, what are the two numbers? x is not the number. The two numbers are 3 times x and 4 times x. So our real answer of the two numbers is 3 times, we plug the uh, 9 in for x, and 4 times we plug the 9 in for x again, and we get, what's 3 times 9? 27, and 4 times 9? 36. And then those are our two numbers. We can add them together to make sure we did it right. So let's add. 7 plus 6 is 13. Carry the 1. 3 plus 2 is 5 plus 1 is 6. 63. Our sum of our two numbers, all the way over here, was to be, was to be 63. And the sum of our two numbers is 63. So we did it correctly. So whenever you have a problem like this with a ratio like that, and you have two numbers that you're trying to find, Make the first number the first number in the ratio and put an x with it, and make the second number in the ratio uh, the same with an x next to it. So that's how you do those. Okay, then we go on to solving proportions. Um, the easiest way to solve proportions is to cross multiply and divide. So for example, I have n over 8, this is the first one, n over 8 is equal to 9 over 12. Now, why does cross multiplying and dividing work? Because basically it's um, eliminating the algebra step, which is how you normally would do it. To You're actually doing the algebra steps, but you're, you're doing them um, in a shortcut. So I could cross multiply the two diagonals, 9 times 8, and then I would divide by the number that's left, which is a 12. However, if I don't want to work with as big of numbers, which, you know, why would I if I'm doing a test? I can reduce 9 twelfths. So if I divide 9 by 3, I get 3, and if I divide 12 by 3, I get 4. So now, instead of 9 twelfths, I'm cross multiplying with 3 fourths. So now it becomes n over 8 equals 3 fourths. And now I can cross multiply with smaller numbers. So 3 times 8 is 24. And I'm going to divide that 24 by the remaining 4. So 24 divided by 4 is equal to 6. So solve each proportion. n is equal to Okay, that's the best way to do it. Let me show why, why that works algebraically. So you understand why that's a situation that works. Let me erase. Put 
the white spot back. Okay, if I was going to use algebra to do this instead of my cross multiplying and dividing, I'd have n over 8 equals 9 over 12. Okay, so I want to get n by itself. So this is dividing by 8, so I'm going to multiply by 8 instead. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other side. And I cross off my 8s. They cancel. I'm left with my n, which is what I want. And then on this side, I do the math. So I have, this can be considered 8 over 1. And I can reduce 12 and 8 a little bit, so I will. So 8 uh, will be divided by 4, and 12 will divide by 4. So that leaves me on the top here with 4 times 9, 36, and on the bottom, 3. And then I divide 36 by 3, and that will be my n equals. So 36 divided by 3 is 12. What did I do wrong? When I reduced it, Okay, I had to pause the video because I made a mistake and I couldn't figure out why it didn't come out to be the same number. Here's my mistake. So I divided, I canceled out by dividing a 4 into there. This is not a 4. That's my mistake. 4 into 8 goes twice. There's my error. So now I have 2 times 9 is 18. Let's get rid of that. 2 times 9 is 18 over the 3 times 1 or the 3. Now my answer will work. I was trying to figure that out. I'm like, okay, what did I do wrong? So n is equal to 18 divided by 3, which is then 6. So here we get the same answer. We should get the same answer doing it algebraically versus doing it cross multiply and divide me. So there we go. Okay, I'm going to hit clear. Hopefully I didn't confuse you on that one too much. We'll do another one just in case I did. So let's do 3y equals 18 over 12. The shortcut way is to cross multiply and divide. So before I cross multiply and divide, I'm going to reduce 18 twelfths. Divide the top and the bottom by 6. That would give me 3 over 2. And now I'm going to cross multiply. My 3 times my 2, that's 6, and I'm going to divide by the other number. The other number that we haven't used is the 3. So it's going to become 6 divided by 3, which is equal to 2. So what does y equal in this case? y equals 2. There we go. Now, do you want to see that algebraically? Yes. Say yes. Okay. So let's see if we can get y to equal 2 again. Let's erase all this and show it algebraically. So what we'd be doing is 3y equals 18 over 12. So now I want to get y by itself since this is 3, oh, 3 divided by y here. So I want to get y by itself. So I have to, I'm dividing by y, so this is going to do a little bit of uh, finagling. So I have to times it by y on both sides. You'll see y in a minute. So these y's will cross off, and I'll be left with 3 on this side. And on the other side, I have 18 twelfths times y. Okay, now I want to get y by itself, so I'm going to leave y on the right side, and I'm going to times by 12 over 18 to both sides. Why? Because that will cancel out my 18s, and it will cancel out my 12s. Whatever I do to one side, I also need to do to the other side, so I have to multiply by 12 over 18 on this side. And when I do that, let's cancel where we can. 
Let me make sure I cancel correctly on this one. So 18 uh, divides by 3 six times. 3 divides by itself once. And now I have 12 on top, 12 times 1. And on the bottom, I have 6 times 1, or 6. So y is equal to 12 over 6, which we know is 12 divided by 6, which is 2. So 2 is equal to y, or y is equal to 2. Same answer, just a little more steps. So I strongly encourage you to use the cross, multiply, and divide method uh, so you don't have to go through all the algebra. But I wanted you to see why it works both ways. Okay, let's move on. Oh, linear equations. Okay, so for linear equations, we are going to complete the table of values. So a linear equation is always in the form, type it out here, y equals mx plus b. Well, what on earth does that mean? Well, the m is the slope. The slope is the change in y over the change in x. And B is where the graph crosses the y-intercept. What is the y-intercept? It's where the graph crosses the y-axis, y-intercept. And then x and y in the equation are just two points on the graph, point x and point y. Um, OK, so what they want you to do is they're giving you the equation y equals mx plus b. In our case, our m is not there, right? So that's considered a one, because you can always put a one in front of a, a letter or a variable. And this minus two is our y-intercept. That means our graph is going to cross our line at negative two. Okay, so we're going to just plug in some points to our equation. So y equals x minus two. So they're telling us what to plug in, 0, 2, 4, and 6. So let's plug in 2. If I, I mean 0. Let's plug in 0. If I said y equals 0 minus 2, what is y going to equal? Right, negative 2. OK. What if I was to plug in 2 into my equation? Then I have y equaling 2 minus 2 or 0. What if I was to plug in? Four. That would be four minus two or two. And finally, what if I were to plug in six? That would be six minus two, which is four. So now I've got my ordered pairs. I've got my x value and my y value, which would help me to be able to graph that. So if I had a little plotted graph here, this is my x axis. This is my y-axis, and I could plot those four points. 0, negative 2. 0 is the left or right, and negative 2 is the up or down. So this would be considered 0, negative 2, and then 2, 1, 2, 0. This would be 2, 0, and then 4, 2. And this, this is just a rough estimate. And then 6, 4 somewhere over here. And that linear equation would look like something like this when we connected all the dots. So that would be the graph of that line. That would have a slope of 1 and y-intercept of negative 2. So here actually is your y-intercept. Your y-intercept is right here where it crosses the y-axis. And we know that's point 0, negative 2. So the y-intercept is always uh, a 0 for x and then whatever the y value is. So you'll know that it's always the y-intercept when the x value is 0. So let's clear that. So the next one wants you to make a table of values as well. Then it says use subtraction to solve each system of equations. So what is a system of equations? So a system of equations, let me just actually make some little space here. Um, I would strongly encourage you to go on to Khan Academy and get a little more information on this. There isn't a lot of information given in this packet, so you're not going to get a lot of practice with it, and it's important. So what I'm going to say is, let's try to make 
So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to make a straight line. Let's make a coordinate graph. And let's plot this, roughly plot y equals 2x plus 5. So 2 is our slope, 5 is our y-intercept. So I'm going to plot a rough 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So our graph is going to cross the y-axis right about there at 0, 5. That's the point 0, 5. Our slope is 2. That means we're going to rise 2 and run 1. Why do I say 1? Because 2 can be rewritten as 2 over 1. So I'm going to rise 2 more. So let me increase my line size a little bit here. I wanted it to be red, and now it's not. So let's get, get back to red here. So let's increase our line size. And we have to rise two. So we're at five now. So let's rise one more, two more. So we rose two, and then we have to go to the right one. That's our run. So that would be about right here-ish. And I might have to erase my point zero five so we can see it. And why did I say that's right about there? Because this is about 1 right here. So this would be point 1, this is point 7, this is point 5. Okay, and then I connect my dots, and I have my, I have my first line, right? Now let's graph the second line, y equals x plus 3. So what is our slope? Our slope is going to be the number in front of the x. In our case, it's invisible, right? So it's just imaginary 1. And then 3 is our y-intercept. So let's call, let's do a different color for this. Let's do uh, hmm, green. OK, so we have a y-intercept of 3. So 1, 2, 3. So right here is the y-intercept of our second line. And the slope is 1, or we could say 1 over 1. So we're going to rise 1, and then we're going to go run 1. So rise 1, run 1. It's going to end up somewhere over here. And then our line is going to, now remember, this is just not exact because I don't have a coordinate graph here. I have just my rough drawings. OK, so that's my second line. What they're asking us to do is find the solution that would be a point on both graphs. So that point would be where? Well, let's change colors here. The point where they intersect right here is the point that works on both graphs. That means that point will make both equations true, a true statement. How do we guess what that point is? Well, we don't have to guess. We can use algebra to figure it out. I mean, we roughly could say it's about maybe negative 2, uh, positive 2 maybe, but we don't know for sure. So they want us to use subtraction to solve the system. I'm not going to use subtraction. I'm going to use addition because addition is always less mistakes, less errors can be made using addition. And they both give you the same answer. So what I'm going to do is find a number that I can multiply by one of these equations so as to eliminate one of the variables. So I see there's an x and there's a 2x. So I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by negative 2. And I'll show you why that's going to work. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to both. Okay. So now if I rewrite that second equation, that's going to result in negative 2y equals negative 2x, be careful on this next part, minus 6, because two, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. And I'm going to leave my first equation the way it was. That was just y equals 2x plus 5. By multiplying by a negative 2, I haven't changed my linear equation other than um, just increase all the numbers. So I haven't really changed anything. Now I'm going to add. I'm not going to subtract. So I have y plus negative 2y. 
Well, that's going to be negative 1y. And that equals the 2x and the negative 2x. That's going to cross off now, isn't it? So that's going to become 0. We're going to eliminate our term. Because 2 and negative 2 is 0. 0 times x is just going to be 0, because 0 times any number is 0. So then what's left is to add the 5 plus the negative 6. So that would be negative 1. 5 plus negative 6 is negative 1. Now I have to divide by negative 1 to both sides to get y by itself. And that would give me y on the left equals, what's negative 1 divided by negative 1? Well, it's positive 1. Okay, I have my y value. My y value is 1. So this point, even though my graph is a little bit off, this point, the y value is at 1 or should be about at 1. But because I'm not on exact science of coordinate graphing here, I just did a rough drawing. It's not showing up exactly at 1. But now we have to figure out what the x value is. What is this value? So this value here, this point, is supposed to be 1. Ignore this extra little line there. And this y value, we don't know what that is yet. We don't know what this point is right here. So we're going to figure that out. So how do we do it? Well, we plug 1 back into one of the equations. So I'll, I'll just pick the second equation because it's easier. y equals x plus 3. So now if I plug 1 in for y, I get 1 equals x plus 3. Now I have to solve for x. So I subtract 3 from both sides. That gives me negative 2, right, equals x. Because if I subtract 3 from both sides, I'll get negative 2. So negative 2 is my x value. And that looks about like a negative 2 right here. So that is my point. So the point that will uh, make both equations true then is point negative 2. The x value is first and then 1. So that's how you solve a system of equations. Okay, I'm going to hit clear. That was the crash course in systems of equations. Like I said, it, it would be great if you used Khan Academy to try some more of these because this is only giving you one more chance here, number one more problem. Over here, for each value of x, find the single correct value of y. y equals x squared when x equals 4. We've already done problems similar to that, so that's just plugging in. Um, that other one, too, is the same. So I would strongly encourage you to, I think they're going to be, the next packet's going to be giving you a little bit more uh, systems of equations and linear graphing. So we'll talk more about systems of equations in the next packet that has that information in it. So I hope you have a good day, and that's it. Bye.